Welcome back to the sweatshop. In today's video, we're going to be working on this 2011 Subaru Outback. What we're doing on the Outback is we are replacing our front rotors and pads. It is something that you can definitely save yourself some money by doing at home. However, if you are going to do it, don't be a crazy person. Make sure you employ the use of jack stands. Don't crawl around underneath your car without the proper safety protection. Of course, I definitely advise you to watch the full length of video so you pick up all my tips. But hey, that's up to you. In this video, I'm not going to be showing you every little step in terms of me grinding and servicing the caliper brackets. I will show you on one of the caliper brackets, the shortened version of it. Uh, basically, I'll identify whatever the rust issues are, stuff like that, what you should do and go from there. Of course, if you've watched my videos in the past, you will know that I will be giving you the torque specs for this particular vehicle. However, it is always advised that you look up the correct torque specs for your specific model. That being said, whenever you are selecting brakes, it is my suggestion that you get a good high quality rotor as well as a set of good high quality pads. Why that is, is because it makes a huge difference on how long they last, how they will last into the years to come, and of course, how they will perform, which is most important. These guys here are a fully coated rotor. Technically, I know it doesn't appear so, but these are Akabonos. It's something that I don't like when they kind of leave this surface uncoated. I'm not sure if there's a zinc coating or what it is, but they are identified by Akabono as completely coated. Akabono, however, of course, uses a really good material. It's a high carbon material, regardless of the application, as far as I have found. But the rotors that I usually use, the Chinese fully coated, great stuff i haven't had any issues with them uh, there are the odd times where you get stuff that gets warped and whatnot but that's a possibility with really any rotor nonetheless get yourself a coated rotor do not get something that's not coated just pointless especially if you're in the rust belt with regards to pads of course always get a good quality pad um, there are many different manufacturers out there currently right now we have had the most success overall with bosch uh, in terms of price point as well as quality uh, none of my customers have complained they all really like the Bosch pads. I haven't had one complaint yet, which is nice. Bendix is always a nice one if you can get that. There are a few brands that I don't like. It, it's always personal choice, of course, but uh, Raybestos, Wagner, depending on what line, aren't really stuff that I like. Chinesium pads sometimes are actually better than those, but uh, I wouldn't recommend them. They just tend to grind up pretty quick. All right, as you can tell, I am rambling on way too much. So before we get started with today's video, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos now get yourself a 19 mil and begin hammering off the wheels no wait we're gonna also show you how to how to do, well you can hammer off the wheels I'm gonna go ahead and show you this types of sounds that might indicate you have bad brakes now generally the best way to see whether you have an issue that tissues won't solve is to listen to the brakes when you apply them or when you're off of them generally what you're gonna get is a squealing that'll tell you that your pad life is low if you're getting you're grinding that means your pad life is extremely low in one section doesn't necessarily mean that the squealer or that little pin or tab that is on your pad is doing its job it might have uneven wear all kinds of situations however if you don't hear any noises but grinding of course you can identify which one by simply rotating right there you can hear that nasty grinding sound but when you go forward, you don't hear it as much. Of course, this sounds much more alarming because you're right close to it with the camera. However, it's only really audible when you are reversing the car. If you're driving it forward, you don't really hear much of anything in the car. Of course, it is always a good thing to inspect your brakes and stuff like that when you have your wheels off. Speaking of getting your wheels off, it's now time for me. Well, seeming a bit on the tight side. Now, with your wheel up in the air, next step is to go ahead and get a flat screwdriver. There are two main reasons you want the flat screwdriver, just to pry this guy forward. How you do this is simply by just gently moving the screwdriver towards yourself. You stick it in between the pad or the rotor, doesn't really matter. This will determine two things, how much you're gonna cry and how much of a pain in the ass this potentially might be. If it's not moving, there are usually two culprits for the Subaru. It's either the piston or the slider that causes it not to move. So yeah, I think we're having the same on both sides. The slider's a little bit of a shit and the piston looks like it's a bit crappy on the bottom. All right, grab yourself a 14 mil flex. 
Be careful with the top holes, move it away from the flex socket because it can damage it. A friend of mine recently discovered that. <laughs> Wasn't very happy. All right. Yeah, you can see here we got lots of nice rust. Looks like we have a pad backing that's coming away. Oh yeah, this side's nice and seized. Yeah, so there is the brunt of our noise. Uh, you can see that shiny spot there on the wear indicator. That's what that guy's called. On the other side, it is toast. Now, this is a rare occurrence because pads have gotten so much better. However, if you're in the rust belt and they've spent more than three, four, five years on your car, depending on the brand, they start to separate. And you can see the pad material is doing a nice job of separating there. Right there is what I'm talking about. So yeah, if you see that, regardless of how much pad life you have left, if your rotors are worth salvaging, just buy new pads because you will destroy your rotor. As you can see, our rotor is craptacular. Um, if you see that sort of thing while the brakes are still operational not necessarily the end of the world however the bigger the ridge is like this the less braking capability you have so in my opinion if it exceeds any more than 25 percent in this area here or 30 percent or 30 percent in this area here and 25 in this area get rid of the rotor redo the brakes because in an emergency situation, it potentially could let you down. Of course, you don't want to find out the hard way. Next step is to go ahead and grab some C-clamp vice grips or two C-clamps so we can press those pistons in. Grab your C-clamp, put it on the back of the piston, and then begin forcing it in. You can see here, this piston's actually moving quite a bit more than the other side piston was. So that's a good sign for this side. The other side wasn't too bad. However, it's not in the best of shape. So I will tell the customer if we do start getting a bit of sticking from that side caliper because it did ease up as it went in, that we'll need to replace the caliper. Uh, now these guys are serviceable. However, I don't usually suggest for DIYers to service pistons. It's not a hard job, but there's a lot of technical stuff that goes into it. Not technical in the ways of uh, information, but stuff you got to know what you're looking at and know what you're dealing with because if you do make a mistake it, it can lead to a really expensive terrible situation so yeah uh, it's usually now just easier uh, to get rid of the whole caliper and replace it however they I have found a place that actually still sells caliper and piston repair kits and stuff like that the dealer as well does sell that sort of stuff so it is an option. Always going slowly. There is a designated tool for this type of caliper. And if, if you've listened to my rants in the past of being a mechanic, uh, well, I've been doing this for a super long time. And currently, <laughs> uh, being that I have all kinds of responsibilities in life, I don't have no goddamn money to spend on tools that I can, you know, get around with other stuff. C-clamps off. You can see here we've got a bit of bulge from our wonderful seals. That's a good indication that they're still working. What you're gonna do is go ahead, take a flat screwdriver and just sneak it in between the seal and the piston and pull or the seal away from the piston. And hopefully you can see the difference there. That guy's nice and flat. It will not come into contact with our pad. You can see here, if I go straight across, I am touching this guy here. And that's exactly what we're looking to avoid by doing this process. So just get the air out. Of course, be very gentle. You don't want to screw the seal up. That there is what we're looking for. Hopefully it's clear on camera. I can't really see. All right, 17 mil flex and a 17 3 8 with a three inch extension. Grab your caliper, just set it aside on the CV or control arm. Basically, you're gonna rest it out of the way. On the control arm and subframe is the best place. Take this contraption here and loosen up this guy up top first. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Got the bottom one. Grab your flex, fire this guy off. Now I'm gonna see if I can get my flex on the top there. If it starts getting tight, don't use the flex. Yeah, there we go. See, that way you don't damage anything. And then pull the bracket off. Do not mix them up left to right. They are different. Well, the bracket's the same, I think, but 
the placement of those little sliders or not. Go ahead, pull your rotor off as well. Oh yeah. Our next step is to go ahead and clear off all of this rust. We want it to be a nice, flat, shiny metal surface. Of course, we don't want to take away material and make the surface uneven. We're just looking to get rid of the rust that's built up over time. Your best friend is going to be this guy here and this guy here, a nice wire cup. This guy here is two and a half inches, I believe. Uh, anyhow, two and a half or three inches, whatever. The point is, get in here, grind away all this stuff. Do not take off excessive material. And whatever you do, don't damage anything because that's just stupid. And yeah, your best friend also is going to be ear, eye, and nose protection. Very, very importante to the longevity of one's health. Now, you should end up with a result like this, where you've knocked away all the rust from around the center of the hub, the flat surface, as well as around here. That way your rotor doesn't have any sort of hindrance when you put it on. Of course, you've just put in a lot of work. We don't want it to rust two days from now because we live in the rust belt. No, that's stupid. Get yourself your anti-seize, anti-seize the hell out of this area here, and then put a nice thin layer on the rest of the flat surface. You should, of course, end up with a result like this, where the flat surface is not coated so thick that anything is hiding in there that could potentially create a uneven surface. And, of course, thick enough to the point where you'll never hopefully see rust again around this area on the hub. That way you don't have to kick your rim off like it owes you money. Now, before you go ahead and put your rotor on, you want to inspect these holes here to make sure they are not, and I repeat, not full of rust. If they are, drill them out as needed. Do not remove material. You're just looking to remove the rust. Douse it with anti-seize. I've already doused these guys with grease, so we're good to go. Go ahead, place your rotor in its new home. Yeah, look at that. Oh yes, now it is everyone's favorite part, taking care of the wonderful caliper bracket. There is a strong, strong sense of sarcasm in my voice, I hope you can tell. It is a pain in the ass, I hate doing caliper brackets. I mean, it's just, you know, if you have a sandblaster, chuck them in, makes life so much easier. If you don't, it's a lot of physical labor. So I'm going to show you these steps and what it is that I do. Usually, if you can't get a pad off by hand, that indicates you're going to have quite a bit of rust buildup. So we're going to use this guy here as our example. Grab a hammer and just... So you can see there, that's, you know, quite a bit of knocking and this is the sort of stuff it causes like you have decent amount pad life still left on the one end you know so servicing the brakes is important I, I think the customer actually said that i service these but i don't remember or see any signs of me being in here but uh yeah pull these guys off make sure that they are the same as your uh, new ones if they're not you're gonna have to service these guys and be gentle with them these companies do make mistakes so don't uh, don't always rely on them uh, you can see there we have a massive buildup of rust here on the outside and that's what's caused that guy there to stay in place Yes, that's right. If you don't have a sandblaster, all of that crap is going to be needed so that you can grind off that caliper bracket. It's not fun. It will take quite a bit of time. In general, it usually takes me, depending on how rusted it is, approximately between 7 to 25 minutes. Sounds excessive, but yeah, it is crucial that you get that sort of stuff done well. So, now... I'm gonna file all the rust off, then I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. Make sure you do not destroy the caliper bracket by going too low. You just want to get enough rust off so you can see a flat, shiny surface. If you do not see machine marks, not the end of the world. If you do see the machine marks, great. Don't go any farther than that. You'll then take care of the rest of the rust and pitted portions with this guy here. This guy can also speed up the process if you have excessive rust, as can this blue fellow here. Uh, nice little tool that makes your life easy. Worth. Uh, these guys are, you know, they make good stuff, but I don't know what the hell the import charges or tariffs are or whatever into Canada, but it's insanity. Like, you know, like in the last clip where I just did all that work with the anti-seize, 
you could easily spray it with lithium uh, grease as well. It's a good substitute. However, the last time I called to price those cans out, they were like $17 a piece. I'm not paying that much, especially when it only does like four or five cars. That tub of anti seize is about 30 bucks, I think, and that'll do 100 plus cars. So yeah, you know, depends. But as a business as well, we have our limitations as to how much we can expend and, you know, actually give a customer a, a price that's not going to give them a heart attack. So yeah, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm cheap because I'm definitely not, but I also do a fairly good job. Like majority of people out there who do breaks and whatnot do not do half the crap that I do. So, you know, that's, that's an ethical issue for me. I can't give people breaks. Like usually what most people do is they won't even file this crap down. They'll just they'll delete the shim, put this guy back in there and yeah, you're good to go. And then five or six months later when everything seizes up again and you're like, why the hell am I doing breaks? It's because that guy said he'll do your break for a hundred bucks right or a case of beer or whatever the situation may be so yeah hopefully you heed the warning you take the steps that i do seriously and do them yourselves now this process is drastically cut down if you use a sandblaster mine's is currently out of commission because i've got a gaping hole in the glove uh, around the entrance point so every time we blast well the wonderfulness of sandblasting makes its way into the air that I have to breathe which is not very fun anyhow I'm gonna stop rambling on about my own craptacular problems and I'm gonna start grinding on this and I'll show you what the finished product looks like okay so it's been approximately half an hour now these things were extremely nice and rotted you want a result like that where essentially there is no rust left in this area to develop now this one has quite a bit of pitting so there will be rust at some point it's just something you can't avoid however you don't want it tomorrow or the day after and if you have exposed metal that's what will happen this is your next step you go ahead you get your favorite type of paint mine is this stuff here zinc well through primer works really well works great for keeping the rust away on this sort of crap you grab it and you just spray it of course shake the hell out of it You should end up with a result like that. Of course, you're going to give it some time to dry. Once you go ahead and put that wonderful coating on, what you're going to do is place your clips in place. This is not a hard process, but there are a few small things you need to be careful with. Once you get your clip in place, the finished product should look like this. Nice and greased. You want to make sure there's enough on there so that it lasts the life of the cycle. You also want to make sure that there's not so much on there that it ends up on your pad material. So. What you're going to do is, of course, compare to make sure they are the same. Once you are 100% sure, you're going to force your clip into place like so. There are two places where the clips latch into place. It is up here and in here. Now, up here can be the pain in the ass. You want to make sure that you force it into the corner and make sure it is also pushed down so that the backing portion here is towards the caliper bracket. Make sure that it ain't going to come apart easily and you're good to go. Let's get you a better view what I just did here just line it up and then force it into place by hand make sure it's nice and flat now very important always double check to make sure it ain't loose get yourself a good quality brake grease this stuff here that comes with the Bosch pads is pretty good I've run out of my nasty clean flow it works well but it stinks to high hell and I will not be buying that shit again because God only knows what kind of damage it's doing nonetheless go ahead grease those guys up and then I'll see you back and we'll talk about the sliders okay so basically this is well your worst nightmare because essentially it's going to season place and it's going to cause you a headache now what you need to do to correct this is of course do exactly what you did with the caliper bracket you're going to grind off all of the rust however sometimes it may make more sense to replace this thing so i'm going to go through these with my wire wheel just grind them up and if they look atrocious i'll end up replacing them provided they're in stock you can see there that one had a rubber this one here is solid do not mix them up reason being is in the rare chance you do mix them up you can potentially have a knocking noise that occurs which will drive you absolutely insane so i'm gonna go grind these guys down and then i'll see you back and show you exactly what we've done and uh, what it is you should do well hopefully you can see it clearly there but uh, it's been about good 10 15 minutes of grinding these guide pins off they're not super terrible i'm gonna put a nice layer of zinc primer on them to coat them but yeah 
If yours look like that and you want to replace them, don't feel bad. Just replace them. That's what they should look like after you coat them. And of course, make sure you, you're generous because you don't want it to rust up. Essentially, you don't want it to do the same thing that we just had to deal with because it sucks. Of course, I didn't mention it, but ear, eye, and nose protection is very important because this stuff is horrible. Like, I've got a brown cloud in the shop right now, which sucks, man. It's like, dude, no matter how much money you make doing this sort of stuff, if you think you're making money doing it, it's not worth it, man. Because I get older, I can feel my health and stuff slowly, you know, going down. And yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you get older, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's health goes down. But dude, it's considerable with uh, this sort of shit. Anyhow, what we're going to be doing now is basically cleaning up any crap that's in here. We're going to let these guys dry off. And then once they dry off, we're going to douse them in a nice layer of grease. I'll show you what that looks like. And then we will put them in. I shall see you back. Okay, so basically grease the hell out of this thing. Make sure you put a good dab at the top. Not so much so that it's a pain in the ass to get in. Make sure you do your absolute best to grease around the top here. Make sure there's no pockets. Then what you're gonna do is before you put it in, you basically grease around the top or the neck of the slider and then you put a nice layer of grease here so that it fits airtight. You don't want moisture getting in. Moisture is the enemy. Once you get it all back together you're good to go it is not fun we have well you saw we got the brunt of most of everything else done relatively easily and it has been i'd probably say the better part of an well yeah almost an hour uh getting the caliper brackets prepared of course this is avoidable if you don't take my advice and want to do your breaks relatively soon after doing them it is my advice to do it this way because it will help to keep your brakes lasting as long as possible. Now, we can go ahead, take our bolts, anti-seize all of them, and then we can put the caliper brackets and all that wonderful stuff back together and then take this wonderful crap box for a test drive. Of course, I'm not going to be uh, filming that portion. I'm just going to be telling you what to do. And well, this, this portion of this clip is kind of useless. So yeah, I'll be back. Go ahead, grab your caliper bracket, slide it into place. Try not to nick the coating on the rotor. What you're going to do is just support it with your hand and always thread in these bolts by hand. Do not use a gun to catch a bolt. Just a bad, bad idea. Make sure you put some anti-seize on that thing. All right. Go ahead, grab your torque wrench, set it to 90 foot-pounds or 120 newton meters. Grab your pads and put them in at a 45 degree angle. What you want to do is hit the clip essentially, push down toward and in to the rotor. There is a good view of it here. Make sure your pad with the wear indicator is on the bottom here. There you go. Nice and easy. You can see all that nice rust dust. It's probably made its way into my lungs. Anyhow, now go ahead, grab your caliper and slide it back into place. Make sure that your wonderful brake holes is not hindered in any way slider in good to go grab your 14 mils make sure you put a nice dab of anti-seize on them and thread them in by hand take up the slack with the 14 mil gear wrench or really a ratchet whatever it doesn't matter grab your torque wrench set it to 20 foot pounds or 27 newton meters can't remember if I said it in the last clip or not, just make sure your hose is in its natural position. It doesn't want to be bound up. If you do have it bound up, unwind it. Make sure it's nice and happy. Go ahead, grab your wheel and put it back on the car. God damn, these things are getting heavier and heavier. Thread your bolts in by hand. Force the wheel into the hub and fire. Yay! Grab your torque wrench, set it to 90 foot-pounds or 120 newton meters. We are good to go. 
I should have put the thumb in there while I actually said it. Anyhow, whatever. Thumbs up for me. That's pretty much all she wrote for this video. The last step and most important step is that you go ahead and pump the brakes before you take this thing for a test drive. Make sure the pedal gets hard under your foot. If it does not, inspect and see what may have gone wrong. Make sure the brakes are engaging before you take this thing for a test drive. Once you're on the test drive, listen for any weird sounds. Make sure you give it some time to bed. It will take some time to go back to its normal feel. Usually it's in the first few applications of the brakes. However, it can take a bit longer depending on the pad material that you got. With all that blah, blah, blah out of the way, hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as insightful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one one don't crawl around in this video i'm not going to be spending well i'm not gonna <coughs> they are called a completely code with regards to pads <coughs> <coughs> fucking throat's not scratchy but my chest infection is just you know everyone's fucking sick right now <sighs> anyhow next step seven no, no, that's not the next step. I'm fucking up my own steps today. Our next step is gonna give me the fuck. <laughs> the fucking compressor, man, cocksucker. You know, I hate that shitbox compressor. It just never shuts the fuck up. The shitbox runs every fucking five to seven minutes. Literally, it's fucking annoying. Beatini, beatine? Flatch sign. <sighs> fucking cocksucker compressor. Get yourself a good quality uh, brake. Someone thinks it's a fucking raceway in the back to replace this thing. So I'm gonna grow focus you fuck. There we go. Do it in this mashin mashin mashin. 90 put pound put pounds. Put pound. The fuck is a put pound, Jimmy? <sighs> oh you fucker, I thought you were gonna go there. Grab a 14 mil flex head gear wrench. <laughs> fuck. Grab a uh, what the fuck am I saying, man? Holy shit. With all that out of the way, all you gotta do is... <laughs> fuck. Put, 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 put pound.